Hey guys, it is Slashback Saturday again. It's Brian here, and the theme that Joe the Horror Man has set for this week is titled YouTube Name Slashers. So essentially what you're supposed to do for this one is you take the first letter of your YouTube channel name and then you match it with a slasher film. So obviously my channel name is NReady, so I need to review a slasher film that begins with the letter N. So I chose to review Night Killer for this week. This is a 1989 film. This was directed primarily by Claudio Fergazzo. Um, but the thing is, the producers didn't like what he did with the film because he had in mind um, making more of a psychological thriller, but they wanted more of a slasher film. So they brought in Bruno Motai to direct a whole bunch of kill sequences. So we got this kind of mishmash Frankenstein of a movie here. In fact, it threw me off at first because when the film starts, it induces a character that was so sure it was going to be the star of the movie but it ends up being someone that gets killed off within the first five minutes, which kind of threw me off before the movie starts proper. So essentially this guy is running around raping and killing people, but he fails to kill one person, and the police are kind of, they're stuck because she's got amnesia, and they really, and she saw the face of the killer. But she ends up getting kidnapped, and that's pretty much the plot of this film. It's such a weird movie. Um, essentially the kidnapping part was supposed to be the, 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 the crux of this film, as opposed to what it ended up being. Um, the kill sequences aren't very good, and it comes down to the, the setup with the killer. Um, he wears a rubber mask. At first I thought he was supposed to be a disfigured killer or, or mon a monster killer, but he's not. He also has this rubber glove, which is not supposed to be rubber, but he uses it to kill people. It's supposed to have blades on the end like Freddy Krueger, but it just looks, looks like long fingernails, and there's a scene, there's a scene of him punching through people's bodies, through their midsections, and it kind of looks like... Um, like watermelon or something like that. It doesn't. It didn't really work, but it adds like to the nuttiness of this film. But the kidnapping part is really where this film shines. We have like um, the two leads, um, Peter Horton and uh, Tara Buckman. Tara Buckman. She was in uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night, but she also kind of looks a little bit like Linda Hamilton. And both of them totally like overact in every scene they're in, to the point where it just becomes so nutty that I really couldn't help but enjoy this movie. Um, this is such a nutty film. Like every scene. There's also like a really bizarre product placement for a Kentucky Fried Chicken in the middle of this film. And it just adds into it. It's such a weird movie. Um, this film has a low rating on IMDb. It's like 3.8. But I think it's actually better than that. But in a so bad it's good kind of way. This is the kind of film where you get your friends together to watch. Like you'll enjoy it a lot more. Like I had a great time watching it by myself. But it's such a nutty movie. I really do enjoy this film. I only wish that... Uh, Severin had uh, included the original cut of this film. So I'm really curious how that would have played. Um, this film also went by the title of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 in certain regions uh, before that movie even came out. So, And of course, if you actually got this from Severin, you would have got it with that Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 cover, which I really wish I would have gotten. All right, guys, that's a review for Night Killer. Hope you guys all enjoyed it. Be sure to check out Joe and everyone else's review for the week. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you all later.